Hi everyone, this is Ms. Longley, and today we are going to be learning about bacteria. This screencast has been split into two parts. The first part, we're going to mainly focus on bacteria structures and reproduction. And then the second part, we'll look at how bacteria cause disease. So let's go ahead and get started. This portion of the screencast is going to be focusing on objective number five, where we will describe the structural and functional adaptations that contribute to prokaryotic success. To start us off, I'd like you to make this chart in your notebook. We are going to be comparing viruses versus prokaryotic cells versus eukaryotic cells. We will be doing viruses together, and then I'll give you a chance to kind of think about what you remember from unit three on prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells. So viruses, we learned from last week, are non-living. They are not cells. The other thing we learned is they do have genetic material. It can be in the form of RNA or DNA. It is likely to mutate. And then the other thing we learned is that viruses must hijack a living cell in order to make new copies of viruses. This is how they reproduce. So a virus is not going to be able to reproduce just laying on a kitchen countertop or some kind of surface. They have to be inside a living cell. And the reason why is because viruses do not have ribosomes. They can't reproduce on their own. So go ahead and hit pause on this video and fill out as much as you can about what you remember on bacteria cells, versus eukaryotic cells like a human cell. We're going to talk about some characteristics of bacteria. And the first thing to note is that bacteria cells are alive. They can be killed if the environment conditions change, such as change in temperature or moisture levels. And they can also be killed by antibiotics. You guys will be learning more about antibiotics tomorrow. They are really simple cells in comparison to eukaryotic cells. Bacteria cells do not have a nucleus or other organelles, but they do have DNA as their genetic material. And they do have ribosomes as well, so they are able to make their own proteins. They can metabolize for energy in order to make ATP. We'll be talking about two ways that they can do this. And they are single cells. One thing to note is that they are small in size, but they're not as small as a virus. So if you look at this picture over here, you can see the virus is this small, teeny old dot. And then in comparison, a prokaryotic cell is much bigger than a virus is. But when you're looking at a eukaryotic cell, a bacteria cell is still really small. So this giant brown thing that you see is actually a eukaryotic cell. You can see how large to the nucleus is compared to the bacteria cell. So bacteria cells are right in the middle in terms of size. The next thing we're going to look at is the five structures found on bacteria cells. If you want to go ahead and hit pause on the video and try your best at drawing uh, this picture of a bacteria cell in your notebook, we are going to be labeling these five structures together. The first structure we're going to label is the DNA. So bacteria cells have a circular chromosome that contains all their instructions to make proteins. And it is just floating inside the cytoplasm. Remember, they do not have a nucleus like eukaryotic cells do. These little dots here are the ribosomes. They, too, are just floating around in the cytoplasm of the bacteria cell. The next structure we're going to label is the cell wall. So bacteria cells have a cell wall that is this inner layer that you see in the picture. It goes just beyond the cell membrane, which is too small to see, 
but the cell wall serves the purpose of protecting the bacteria cell. It's made of a polysaccharide material. The very outside layer that you see is called the capsule. The capsule is made of a protein carbohydrate material, and it has two purposes. The purpose, number one, is that it prevents the bacteria from drying out. Bacteria love moisture, and if it becomes too dry for them, then they will basically disintegrate. So the capsule is protecting the bacteria cell from drying out. The other thing that it's doing is kind of acting like a winter coat, it's just a thick extra layer. When you're all bundled up in your winter coat, sometimes it's really hard for people to identify who you are because you're all bundled up and it's really hard to see. So the capsule does basically the same thing for the bacteria cell where the white blood cells have a really hard time identifying what kind of bacteria cell has entered into the body. And it's because that capsule is really thick. Um, for some bacteria cells, they also release slime from their capsule. Not all of them do, but it's just another way that they can evade our white blood cells. So to kind of recap these three layers, again, bacteria cells do have a cell membrane. It's really thin. They have that cell wall made of a polysaccharide. And then the very outside layer is the capsule. Both the capsule and the cell wall are serving the, for protection of the bacteria cell. The next structure we're gonna label is the pili. That is these finger-like projections that you see coming out of the capsule. And they're serving the purpose of allowing the bacteria cell to attach to surfaces. And one of the surfaces that they want to attach to is the host cell that they're trying to infect. And the last structure we're gonna look at is the flagella. So not all bacteria cells have flagella. Flagella are serving the purpose of allowing the bacteria cell to swim in its environment. So you're typically only gonna find bacteria that live in a watery environment like ponds or like any water. Uh, they're gonna have a flagella. So that is the five structures that you need to know about bacteria cells. Now we're gonna move on and talk about bacteria reproduction. So bacteria reproduce asexually, and they do this through the process of binary fission. If you think back to our cell reproduction when we're learning about mitosis, eukaryotic cells reproduce asexually as well using the process of mitosis. It is a little bit more complicated than what bacteria use, uh, but just keep that in mind that both prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells can reproduce asexually, but they use different processes for that. Bacteria cells are using binary fission. So what asexually means is that only one bacteria cell is needed. They do not necessarily need a host to reproduce. So what that means is that bacteria cells can reproduce on a surface, like a doorknob or like a kitchen countertop, or they can also reproduce inside of a host. And again, all they need is just one bacteria cell to reproduce, and eventually you can form a giant colony like you see here. So how they use binary fission is the first thing they have to do is replicate their DNA. Again, they only have one circular chromosome. Once they make a copy of their DNA, the cell will start to stretch and elongate, and eventually it forms a cross wall and it splits into two identical cells. Pretty simple, uh, definitely a lot less complicated than mitosis that eukaryotic cells use to reproduce. And that brings us back here to our chart. So if you weren't able to finish uh, filling out information that you gathered about prokaryotic cells versus eukaryotic cells, you should, after watching the screencast, be able to fill in the rest. 
go ahead and answer the following questions that are found on the Schoology quiz, and I'll see you for part two.